if you have a court that is not independent and honest and principled, this type of directive is not going to solve anything. And panel a whole lot of politically inclined justice. What, what, what will be the effect? Not. Anyway, it was not yet like that at our time. This criticism, as noted as at pages 48 to 49 of Dr. Date Ban's formidable book, Reflections, on the Supreme Court of Ghana, um, has persisted under the current Chief Justice. He there states as follows. I'm quoting from that table. That time, it was not this Chief Justice. One is, was referred to his time. Quote, the Chief Justice's power to empanel judges confers on him or her arguably the opportunity or potential to influence the outcome of particular cases. The Chief Justice's knowledge of an individual judge's track record on particular issues or his or her judicial inclinations on particular issues may give the Chief Justice this potential. This, rightly or wrongly, has attracted unfavorable comment from people in political circles in relation to politically controversial decisions. It is in re reaction to such comments that Chief Justice Georgina Wood decided that she would, during her tenure, empanel as a matter of practice a bench of nine justices to hear all constitutional cases. So that's why 2013 found me on a panel of nine election petition. On this current practice, the Constitution Review Commission commented that it finds in regard to Ghana's judicial practice that no law has ever prescribed the maximum number of justices of the Supreme Court that should sit on a case brought before the court, though it has been the practice to specify the quorum. It has noted that this is a deliberate policy on the part of the lawmakers to allow the highest court a certain flexibility and freedom in deciding when to field a full complement of members depending on the gravity of the case and the need for a reconsideration of the law. It acknowledges that this practice has helped ensure that in the adjudication of matters of importance, as many judicial minds as possible would be involved in settling the law and making a definitive pronouncement. In this regard, the Commission commends the emerging practice by which nine justices of the Supreme Court are empaneled to sit on constitutional cases." Unquote. The legal colossus Dr. Date Baji L.C. retired at page 201 of his third book, has further observed as follows, quote, a perception and conviction by the public of the Supreme Court's impartiality between parties in its adjudication is vital to its fulfillment of its broader role. Nevertheless, there has in recent years been a degree of controversy in the media as to the impartiality of the judiciary in general in disputes between the government, by which is meant the executive, and the individual. This has been a challenge to the Supreme Court, along with other courts. Um, this has, uh, has had, oh yes, uh, other courts has, have had to live with. The challenge has arisen from the highly competitive nature of Ghanaian party politics in the last decade, and the perceived tendency for a party in government to, pers to prosecute politicians belonging to the opposition. The court has been caught in the middle of this conflict, and in their endeavor to do justice between parties before them, have incurred the wrath of political party activists 
of the governing party who have alleged that the judiciary is biased against the government. The best response to this challenge is for the conduct of the judiciary to manifest its indubitable impartiality. I repeat that. The best response to this challenge is for the conduct of the judiciary to manifest its in indubitable impartiality. Now I'm pausing here. You cannot have a politically slanted judiciary able to exhibit indubitable impartiality. What is not there is not there. Simple as that. On the other hand, Dr. Dateba JSC, uh, retired in his aforementioned book, states at pages 211 to 212 regarding this matter, thus, the mode of appointment of justices of the Supreme Court is specified by Article 144 of the 1992 Constitution. It provides for the appointment by the President acting on the advice of the Judicial Council in consultation with the Council of State and with approval of Parliament. Thus, both the executive and the legislature are involved in the process. The intention of the framers of the Constitution, as confirmed by practice, appears to be that nominations should be made by the Judicial Council, although the, appointments, the appointment is by the President. The names of nominees recommended by the Judicial Council are forwarded to the President who places them before the Council of State for their views. If the views of the Council of State are not negative, the President then forwards the names to the Speaker of Parliament for parliamentary veto. It should be noted, however, that Presidents in the Fourth Republic have not considered themselves bound by the advice of the Judicial Council in relation to nominations for appointment to the Supreme Court. Presidents have on occasion refused to accept some nominees recommended by the Judicial Council. Under a constitution on the Westminster model, such as that enforced in Ghana between 1957 and 1960, the Governor General was obliged to follow the advice given him on judicial appointments. However, this convention and understanding have not survived into the Republican era. Ordinarily, presidents tend to accept the nomination of the Judicial Council as it has to be remembered. The Attorney General, the President's principal legal advisor, and four nominees of the President serve on the Judicial Council. The President does has ample opportunity to influence the nominations by the Judicial Council. Furthermore, because the constitutional provision requires Parliament's prior approval, Parliament has a veto power over the appointment of any Supreme Court Justice. I'm pausing here a little. You want a judiciary to be free. Apart from the Attorney General who is appointed as a political minister by the president. The president has four other nominees on the Judicial Council to ensure what impartiality.